I'm going to tell you how car accident cases work from right after the crash to you hopefully getting paid. Never leave the scene of the crash without calling the police. The police will document the scene of the crash and prepare a crash report. Without this report, the other driver may change his or her story about how the accident happened. And then their insurance company may deny your claim. Even if you self-report the crash later, it will not help as much as you having a report filed by a police officer at the scene of the crash. Insurance companies can only process your claim if they have a claim number for the accident. This is the specific number that you or your lawyer will give to the insurance company to find out what's going on with the claim. Sometimes by the time you contact the other driver's insurance company, their driver may have already reported the accident to them. This will save you time from having to go over some of the basic facts of the accident, like the make and models of the cars involved and what happened. But other times the other driver won't have reported the crash to their insurance company. In this situation, you or your lawyer will need to report the claim to the other driver's insurance company. But this is where many people who are in car accidents make a big mistake. They tell the other insurance company much more information than they need to know. And this may later result in you getting a smaller payout. Whatever you say to the insurance company becomes a permanent part of your claim. This is true whether it's in writing or on a recorded call. It will never get erased. If you were in a very serious accident, the other driver likely will have reported the accident to their insurance company. They're either scared about you making a claim against them and other times they wanna get their car repaired fast. When you report the claim, the auto insurance company is going to ask you for the following. The names of the drivers involved, how the accident occurred, the date of the crash, and their insurance policy number. They're going to also ask you if you were injured in the accident. If you were hurt in the crash, they'll assign a separate adjuster to handle your bodily injury claim. The other driver may or may not have bodily injury liability coverage on their insurance policy. Bodily injury liability coverage pays for your medical bills, lost wages, and pain and suffering. Some states like Florida don't require many drivers to have bodily injury liability insurance. This coverage only applies if their insured was careless and caused your accident. Insurance companies need time to investigate your claim. While they'll give you a claim number, this doesn't mean they'll wind up paying you money. It just means that they have a record of the accident. In order for the insurance company to pay you, the other driver must have had insurance coverage that was active at the time of the accident. Sometimes the other driver will give you or the police officer an auto insurance card at the accident scene. But police officers don't check to see if they had active insurance on the day of the accident. This means that there's a chance that the other driver's insurance was not active at the time of your accident. In this situation, the driver's insurance company doesn't have to pay you money. I've seen this happen many times, even when the other driver was driving a nice car. The at-fault driver's insurance company will also see if there is an exclusion in the policy that doesn't require them to pay you. This is one of the reasons that when you report a claim to your insurance company, they ask you if you were working at the time of the accident. They're looking to see if they can deny coverage for you having the wrong type of car insurance policy. If the other driver used their car for business but had a personal auto insurance policy, their insurance company can deny coverage. This means that the at-fault driver's insurance company wouldn't offer you money to settle your case. The other driver's insurance adjuster will have a property damage adjuster inspect your car or ask for an estimate of the damage. If they clear coverage, this is good news for you. The best proof that they've cleared coverage is to request that they state it in writing. But even if they've cleared coverage, it does not mean that you'll automatically get paid. You still need to prove two aspects of your case. First, you'll need to show that your car is damaged or you're injured. Second, you'll need to show that the other driver was at fault for causing the accident. The traffic accident report is the starting point for the insurance company seeing who is at fault. The adjuster will also talk to witnesses, if any. You or your lawyer should get in touch with the witnesses quickly after the crash. But keep in mind that anything that you say or text to a witness can later be used against you in your claim. So be careful. The other driver's insurance company will want to speak to their insured driver. If their driver doesn't respond to their insurance company, it can delay payment of your claim. Insurance companies love taking your recorded statement. To explain, let's look at Ray's case. Another driver made a left-hand turn in front of my client, Ray. Ray's car was damaged and he was injured. The other driver's insurance adjuster said she needed Ray's recorded statement to pay for his car damage. I told her that I don't let my clients give recorded statements to the other driver's insurance company. Eventually, she backed off and paid for Ray's car damage. After an intense battle, we settled Ray's personal injury case for $260,000. But this was only after the other driver's adjuster told me that she needed Ray's recorded statement. 
Had Ray given a recorded statement to the other driver's insurance company, they may have paid him less for both his car damage claim and his personal injury claim. So you don't have to give the other driver's insurance company a recorded statement. Yet, I see so many people who are injured in accidents still give recorded statements to the other driver's insurance company. They do this because they assume that they must. They also assume that the other driver's insurance company will do the right thing. They've likely seen the other driver's insurance company ads for years on TV and they think that they care about doing what's best for you. Unfortunately, that often isn't so. Insurance claim supervisors are happy when they pay you less money, but don't take my word for it. Here's an internal document from one of the largest car insurance companies in the US. Next, the insurance adjuster will determine the percentage of fault on each driver. The more fault that they can place on you, the less money that they'll pay you. They'll only pay you for their driver's percentage of fault. For example, if their insured driver is 75% at fault for causing the crash, they'll only pay you for 75% of your total damages. This is true for your claims for both your property damage and personal injury. The other driver's insurance company will likely send you an authorization for you to sign. This authorization will let them get your medical records and bills. Again, since you don't have a contract with the other driver's insurance company, you don't have to sign this authorization. Instead, I send them my client's medical records and bills that are relevant to this case. Soon after your claim is reported to the insurance company, they set a settlement reserve for your claim. The reserve is the most probable estimate of the amount that they believe they'll have to pay. By law, insurance companies are required to set these reserves. You want their settlement reserve to be as high as possible. This is because it makes it easier for the adjuster to pay you. As more information comes to light in your case, the reserve can either go up or down. For example, if a witness says that you were speeding at the time of the accident, it could trigger a decrease in the settlement reserve. One of the quickest ways to get an insurance company to increase their settlement reserve is to send them your medical bills and records. This is particularly true if you've had surgery or a major procedure. Yet I know many lawyers who don't quickly send the insurance company these important records. And this often results in a delayed settlement in a client who is not happy. Even though the insurance company has a settlement reserve, they want to settle your case for as much as possible under the reserve. This increases their profit. It's how these car insurance companies remain some of the richest companies in the world. You can ask the adjuster what their settlement reserve is for your case. Their answer will show you the battle that lies ahead. Next, you or your attorney will need to estimate the value of your personal injury claim. To do so, you add up your pain and suffering, out-of-pocket medical bills, and lost income which means you need to know the settlement value of your pain and suffering. To learn how much your pain and suffering is worth, watch this video here or click on the link in the description below. And if you're seriously injured in the state of Florida and someone else is at fault, click on the link in the description below to see if I can represent 